Collecting football memorabilia and selling items connected to the beautiful game has gone through the roof in the last two decades. And we're here at McTeer's Auctioneers in Glasgow just to get an insight into what is worth a lot of money. Have you got that golden nugget of football memorabilia that will net you more than a few thousand pounds. Well, could it be a match-worn shirt? Could it be a programme, a medal from a special game that a player has passed on to you? Or could it be that one of those legendary players just wants to sell his entire collection? Well, this is the perfect place for us to give you an insight into the price and what you need to be looking at to collect to make yourself some money in the future. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by James Bruce from McTeer's Auctioneers. James, sporting memorabilia, everybody thinks they've got something within the footballing world that's worth a bit of money. Just give us an insight into the type of thing that fans up and down the country should be looking to keep a hold of. It might be worth something. Completely. Um, we, we are inundated with inquiries um, regarding... Uh, sporting pieces, you know, uh, the market itself has, has only gone from strength, strength to strength. And I think in the last 20 years, it has grown uh, quite simply because uh, whereas before, you know, we used to have a couple of serious collectors, um, anyone who was a collector collected big on a large scale. Now you've got uh, collectors who don't necessarily want a lot, but they want one piece of their club's history. Now, the sort of inquiries we get are, you know, uh, whether it be programs, tickets, uh, signed pieces. No, these bits are of interest um, at times. However, really uh, the things that, um, for, from my point of view, I, I would be keeping my eyes peeled for are uh, things such as medals, things such as trophies, match-worn jerseys are another one, um, because these are those items that are um, uh, a bit more special. No, okay, when we talk about programmes, when we talk about tickets, you do have your one-off pieces that, um, you know, if they're related to an important match, for instance, the 1967 uh, uh, Lisbon Lions programme, um, it's, it's uh, very collectible and does around about £100 at auction. Um, but yeah, I, I just think uh, across the board, as long as it's special, as long as it's unique, um, keep your eyes peeled for those sort of things because those are the sort of things that are only going to appreciate in value really. Yeah, obviously you want the provenance of the piece related to the time and the backup of information with it, which is great. Yep. Um, you mentioned match-worn shirts there. Is there anything extra special about having a match-worn shirt that maybe somebody, that particular player has signed? Does that add gravitas? To uh, I, I think it does because in many instances, and I'm glad you picked up on provenance there because provenance with these things is, is uh, really the crux of the matter because when somebody comes to you with a jersey, um, when somebody comes to you with a medal, you buyers are naturally sceptical and you have to say categorically that this is, you know, this we can trace back um, uh, to that player, to that match, to that season. Uh, indeed, one of the things I always look out for with uh, sporting medals is hallmarks. Um, you know, alarm bells start to ring when uh, a medal that was awarded to a player for a certain season um, uh, is hold marked for four or five years later. Um, uh, something won't add up in that sense. But as you say, when a signature is on a jersey, uh, in many instances, it, it, when you've got the provenance and you can lead that back, it's only helpful for the for the item. Yeah, so there are so many different areas within football. I, um, listen, are my Roy the Rovers uh, <laughs> magazines, are they worth anything? Uh, Should I'm, I hold on to them? <laughs> possibly, if they gave you joy, then why not? But uh, uh, if, if you email in, uh, I might uh, tell you that they, they might not be suited for a sporting sale here. But. I, I had a feeling you were going to put a complete dampener on it. Um, but listen, the good thing about it it is every sporting auction you know at McTears uh, sometimes I just love sitting and watching as the price goes up and up and up we've got uh, three or four things that I want to talk about Great obviously stuff. 1967 everybody thinks they've got uh, an original on this but um, what should we be looking out for for that match day program for the match day program you know uh, the, the one thing I'm always looking out for is the the single staple um, Celtic, of course, released a uh, reproduction, which you can still purchase from the shop. And plenty of times have I been uh, uh, had, the bear, had to be the bearer of bad news when somebody's brought in their programme and straight away, yep, it's not from 67. 
Um, but certain things you're looking for are the coloration, the material as well. You don't want it to be, you know, with, with older things, you want them to look as if they've got a bit of age. Certainly that does. And I know for a fact because the, uh, the gentleman, uh, uh, the vendor, uh, went all the way to Lisbon and brought it back and is putting it into sales. So wow. it wears the scars of that journey uh, and wears them well. Yeah, we've got some range of stuff as well, but just one particular thing as well from 67 there, but 1965-66 is um, a medal, which was the start of Celtics nine in a row. Now this, this for me is a wee bit special. That, that, that is an interesting piece, an important piece. And also it's, you know, it's a good case study as it were, because when we look at that, you know, it's, um, it, it's a medal, it's, it's got all the dating and it's perfect for that season. The first of nine in a row, First season, Jock Steen was at Celtic. Um, and of course, Celtic beat Rangers, um, I think by two points that campaign, which if they hadn't by those two points, they wouldn't have qualified for the mm. European Cup the next year. And how much do you think that would go for? No, the trouble with this one is the valuation is one to 2,000 pounds, which is a, a sort of a fair estimate on it. Because we don't know who it was awarded to, that's why it can be become a wee bit more difficult. Why it's not going to make as much as you know if if we had one that was awarded to one of the star players from that um, uh, season. Um, of course, with these medals as well, and uh, there's other medals in this cell um, that are, were awarded to whether they be directors, committee members. And that is where the sort of, you know, uh, where that valuation comes from. Because, you know, as I say, if, if it was awarded to a key player, you could be looking at double that. Yeah. As it stands, we don't know who it was awarded to. Although it is of Celtic FC interest, it's just, yeah, uh, it still should run on that merit alone. Yeah, two particular um, items here that uh, have Rangers in mind, I just think are absolutely fabulous. One, um, which again uh, has got a great link because I used to sit next to him at Radio Clyde for about eight years. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, not only did I think he was a fantastic player, but a brilliant guy. Uh, Derek Johnston, it's his League Cup winner's medal um, from 1970. And the reason why it's special is Derek, as a 16-year-old, scores the winning goal. Off his napper, fantastic goal against arch-rival Celtic on the day. As well as the fact that, um, you know, this was 1970-71 League Cup. You know, we're talking about the, the nine in a row era for Celtic and Rangers hadn't won, picked up any silverware for about four seasons at that point. Comes in, your man Derek Johnston, great goal, off his head to secure that trophy and um, uh, what a way to do it as a 16-year-old uh, Brilliant. Yeah, uh, well, absolutely piece. superb. I mean, any Rangers fan, in fact, any football fan can get a hold of that. Um, I don't think I've got enough money for it. How much would I need? So for that, it's in about three to 5,000. And oh. uh, again, with sporting pieces, th there's things as a value in my day-to-day -day job at McTears, I could, uh, I just know the value of because we sell so much of them. Yeah. With sporting pieces, it's a bit more complicated because, you know, uh, there's only one of that. There's only one of that, and um, you know I, I can say it's worth three to five thousand. I can think of plenty of things that have come in before. I've said it's worth this amount, and it goes for uh, double that. So, hopefully, on the day, you know, it's uh, it's an important piece. We could be looking at more. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, the the current valuation is three to five thousand. All you need is a couple of people, and uh, uh, it can start to go a bit bananas. Yeah, three to five thousand. Wow. Um, okay, this piece here um, might not look much to people um, who are into football memorabilia, but f for me, this one could be tasty on the day. Well, you're quite right, and uh, I think the uh, the poignancy in it is that well, um, it, it doesn't. You know, we, we we look at the other sort of medals here, all in gold, um, and you look at this and it's quite a small piece, silver, but when you realise what it is and the context surrounding it, Britain at war, 1940-41 is the date on this, um, you realise why perhaps they didn't want to uh, uh, splash out on a, on a nice gold medal because the, the, the country was at war. Um, obviously a period of turmoil for the nation um, uh, and uh, the, uh, the Scottish Football Association uh, halted all tournaments. Um, and as a result, you know, there was still, there was still um, uh, people 
who uh, they, they needed to distract themselves from the war that was uh, blazing. Um, and they started up two competitions, the Southern uh, Scottish Football League and the Scot Southern Scottish Football League Cup. Now, Lowe's were sort of um, the, the substitutes, if you, if you like, for this league and the League Cup. Yeah. Um, and it came during a period of um, unrelenting dominance for, for uh, Rangers. I don't think they'd gone more than a year since uh, 1917, 18, without picking up a major uh, title. Uh, and indeed, they won all five of the uh, Scottish uh, Emergency League is, Leagues and they wore four of the Emergency League Cups. Um, the two, uh, one of them that they lost was lost because uh, they drew with uh, Hibernian and it was decided by throw-ins, of, of all things. What a weird way to do it. But this comes from that very first one, 1940-41. Wow. Uh, when I saw the email through, I was I, I, I'd never seen one before, but I knew exactly what it was. Um, uh, and it says it's been won by Scott Simon. So, yeah. Um, what, what, what more player would you want on this? Scott Simon, obviously brought in by Struth went on to succeed Struth. Yeah. And when you look at his uh, playing career, it may be a bit deceiving because it says he only made uh, 40 or so appearances. He made over 250 unofficial appearances, this being um, that first uh, emergency league. Um, and uh, yeah, he, you know, uh, a guy whose reputation, it's, um, it, it, it exceeds himself. So yeah. um, what would this go for? What do you think? Again, you know, a, a nice uh, three to five thousand pound estimate on it. Uh, not getting uh, too carried away, but I have got real high hopes for this because, um, yeah, it's just a, it's a one off really again. Yeah. A rare piece indeed. I mean, there are some fabulous medals. Um, obviously, uh, from my own point of view, I love going to these auctions to see the match-worn shirts. If you've got one and you think it's a special one from a special game, hold on to it. <laughs> Could be a programme, a 1967, even a 1972 Cup Winners' Cup hit. 1983, Gothenburg. Uh, I can think of Dundee United in the, mm. the semi-finals of the European Cup and indeed the UEFA Cup final of 1987. When you think about Scottish uh, games and uh, some of those favourites that you may be attended. Hold on to it. You never know if you've got all the teams signing a match day programme. It can go for a colossal amount, James, can't it? You're, you're quite right. Um, uh, particularly, um, and, and it's one that we do see a fair amount of, but uh, the, these typically make about £100, the Lisbon programme. But I've seen them go for, you know, four or five times that amount when they've got the signatures, when they've got the provenance. Um, but yeah, as you say, uh, there's been plenty of uh, glorious moments for, for Scotland and the teams within that nation uh, globally. So um, yeah, it's, it's just uh, buy, what you, buy what you like, but uh, uh, be, be sensible. And, and I think uh, when, when looking to buy, this is the beauty of uh, uh, buying through ourselves, for instance, McTears. You, you know you're going to a trusted place and, and you know you're getting what you're said to be getting as opposed to, you know, eBay or, or what have you. It's, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a good bit of advice. Um, Providence on it, people that will verify exactly where it came from uh, and you never know, get up into the loft, get into those drawers and those boxes where you've stored all those little golden nuggets yeah. of football history. You never know, James might bring the hammer down on something that goes for an absolute fortune or you may get an extra couple of hundred quid <laughs> to help with the holiday. You never know, James. Definitely. It's been an absolute joy talking to you. I love coming here to make tears to see all the football memorabilia. Um, and if you get a chance, go onto the auction site and you'll find those sporting days where you can come in here or indeed go online and make your bid. And you never know, you might get something special. I'd love that 1970 League Cup yes. final medal from Derek Johnson. I wish I actually I'd spoken to him before he actually put it in here. But <laughs> nevertheless... Um, still great to be here. Thank you very much to James. Thanks to McTears for having us. Hopefully that's given you a little insight into what you need to do to keep that special bit of football memorabilia in your pocket and then sell it at the right time. You might get a few extra quid. Great stuff.